जी सर वालेकुम सलाम सर कैसे हैं आप करिए से ठीक ठाक है नाम आप सुनाए माशाल्लाह ठीक ठाक है अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह सर अल्लाह का करम बेहतरीन जबरदस्त और सुनाए कैसे हालात हैं पर सर सर अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह एवरीथिंग इज एवरीथिंग इज फाइन अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह थैंक यू सो मच फॉर गिविंग द टाइम सर आई वाज वेटिंग फॉर अबाउट 12 एंड हाफ अ मंथ ओह माय गॉड Yes, you know this. Uh, everything have a specific time for sure. You know, <laughs> whatever plans we yes. have, might be this is the right yes. time. And if the uh, yes, sir, no, 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 Yes, sir. Sure, inshallah. Lately, you were uh, in the uh, most recent interview. You were saying that we prioritize the thing. We are going to dedicate the time for that thing. So once again, thank you so much for prioritizing me and giving your value. No, no, actually, this uh, this is a fact. You know, when uh, especially once you have uh, heavy traffic, you know, a lot of like activities and different kind of. Yes, no doubt. Yes, yes. That depends. So, Even prioritization is not a kind of an easy job to do, well because yes, you always have to. But the people like you, uh, you know, and sometimes, sometimes why we uh, delay our prioritization because uh, might be we don't have uh, a solid solution, you know, <laughs> for a person yes, like so might be you have some agenda to have your better, bright future, you know. But at that stage, might be the solution is not there. So now we yes, are sir. in a right exactly. state, and uh, I also understood uh, the market more deeper, especially as a manpower supplier. So I think oh, sir. Yes, sir. We, we must support each other, inshallah. Inshallah, sir. Inshallah. So, Anam, who is Anam actually? Yes, sir. Can you repeat, please? Who is Anam? Yes, sir. <laughs> I am. Inamla and HSC specialist, uh, and I have been graduated in operation theater technology. And I have passed the Nibos International Teller Certificate with the credit marks. Uh, moreover, I have been in the industries uh, for a couple of years. Like I was having a, it an exit plan uh, because we were just scammed by our industry, no practical experience. And to support my financials, uh, someone luckily told me that this is the right way uh, to do that, and that's why I, uh, being a passionate learner and writer, I have uh, convinced the employers uh, to prioritize safety. Either we don't have the uh, much prioritization in Pakistan, like they don't understand, they don't prioritize the rules, regulations, uh, the safety because they think it's an added step or an afterthought. For their productions, because companies are making money a lot, that's their main priority. And recent, the most recent articles I have written on that why we must stop saying safety is our number one priority, because uh, it should be instead it should be a core value. I think uh, uh, people when uh, the schedule disrupts everything, uh, then the safety is going to take the back seat in in this case. So if it's a core value, and it it should be everything will be going fine. And uh, moreover, I am planning to write another article like uh, why we make uh, an accident going to happen, and we are going to make it a learning learning opportunity. Why we do don't proactively work for uh, the hazards Ooh. that are going to be introduced. So how do you rate the top management commitment uh, in Pakistan? In Pakistan, business community uh, needs it like uh, sir, the commitment sir, it's, because it's, it's all that uh, starts from top, starts from me, starts from you, no doubt. But the first no, is yes, yes, sir. It's uh, it's uh, totally depends on different factors. Like the uh, industry is whether international concerns their core values, international agenda, or the national agenda, the local market, and so on and so forth. But where I have worked, like the Chinab Textile Limited, as well as the Crestex. They both were international, based on international agenda. But the COVID nineteen hit them very badly. 
Uh, so uh, at some stages, they uh, understood that safety is uh, really is something uh, helping us to do everything smoothly, not to disrupt their productions. So you will enhance sort of your productivity, quality, your business growth, you know, business continuity can yes. be interesting. Even you can yes. uh, find out a lot of, uh, you can, you know, explore some other markets also because you can prove that you are a responsible people, you know, especially having yes, uh, uh, for quality health safety in one. No doubt. So initially they were not prioritizing, like, you know, after external were not thinking about safety. They, they thought this is something uh, very ridiculous for them, right? Uh, even though basically the Faisalabad area is an industrial zone of Pakistan, mm -hmm. so we gathered different data from different uh, industries uh, like Sitara Textile Mills and showed them the data, how they are uh, prioritizing their safety because they prioritize up to some extent their safety. Okay, so you know this is uh, an important question. You know, every country of the world, all business community, they are re really much concerned. You know, because everybody have every company have some designing, implementing, and you know, like everybody yes. some have system, but implement yes. they need the real team players on site actually as a, a visible leaders like you. You know, uh, to be working mm -hmm. with the. Uh, you know, like uh, housekeeping department to be working with security department, even the production department, uh, motivating every individual to comply with safety regulations and uh, reduce, you know, the number of unsafe acts or conditions. So in that context, uh, what type of strategies you were uh, using, you know, to implement uh, such kind of things that like related to health and safety? And, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As the question is how I have designed uh, different programs like safety programs. Uh, I know, like I, I've, I have not done anything, something exceptional, but I did. Like this is a construction safety manual around the CSM. I just uh, uh, I took the part where that is the like uh, what is the scope of area of the industry. Like, along, it's not based on uh, only oil and gas. Uh, literally, it's a uh, very awesome content. And secondly, I just start out with a couple of things, like what are the minimum standards we are going to set that are cost effective for our market, like in Pakistan. True. So here, not the HEC, uh, UK or H OSHA regulations or OSHA is not going to investigate. So I have designed uh, in this way, like using Aramco CSM as a benchmark, where I have worked. <laughs> secondly, uh, the question is how I implemented that, right? is like we, we have the three pieces like we we make the police uh, a key regulations then we are dividing it into policy policy then we make the procedures we are going to these Sorry, not, have you ever policies. established or develop any policy like hsc policy uh, have you ever yes, had to establish okay perfect motion and procedures yes. Yes, sir. I have developed the policy. Like I am currently working at Mother and Child Hospital, which is a construction product, and it's the South uh, Punjab uh, fifth largest child health care, like uh, having the capacity of uh, 150 beds. Non profit or profitable organization? I mean, is it a non profit hospital or? No, it's 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 non profit. It's a government project. Oh, okay. It's a government project. Perfect. Yes, sir. Yes, it, it was initiated by non profit governments. Okay. But uh, to form somewhat extent now, it's uh, uh, in the re renovation part, like the paintings and some kind of lifting, uh, not so critical on what they are doing to somewhat extent. So, Enam, we have another question, like, uh, what are the key steps you always follow to identify potential hazards and risks you know, in the workplace? And how do you keep up to date with HSC regulations and industry standards? Do you have, have you ever established even the legal register for your company or the project? Yes, we have uh, not registered uh, like something like that, but we have developed a communication, like we have ended the communication gap between the key workers and the management. I, well, like uh, it's uh, research based, uh, like the gossips among, uh, around the water cooler is passing more information than the traditional approaches. So mm -hmm. potential identifying potential hazard is uh, 
your approach how are you an idiot is doing going to do that thing i am not going to do, do that thing so in this case uh, the potential hazards and the uh, risks we always uh, like i personally always uh, uh, focused on risk versus hazards like uh, if you are going to take a risk like i am over speeding my bike but uh, what might i might be i be thinking i will be thinking right i will be reach on time to move like 5 minutes before but miscalculated the uh, rewards of that risk like uh, it could be dangerous to my life it could be even public or something else so in this approach we we always specify the like jsa like in this case job safety analysis we going to divide in different steps uh, mm-hmm. how the best way or the safe way in the safest way that a specific job can be done and the uh, second is uh, how do you keep up to date so it's a regulation of actually i think have developed like the policy in recent uh, hsc uh, policy at mother and child care whenever an accident is going to happen what i am going to see i am i always look for the system error not the, to blame someone else where the system okay. has lacked something okay. so that Yes, so that uh, in this way we may we review our policy. If the accident has happened, it's the clear indi- indication that something is uh, missing in our policy, or the it's going to be a system error, or the or worker like is the not understood. is not understood, or the employees are not uh, the policy is not sold well. Actually, <laughs> nobody is yes, giving. Yes, yes. Actually, yeah, safety is all about selling, and so the worst thing is that. it's cool thing like danger scenes are pretty awesome we see we see in we see indian movies we they interviewing us for the next what what's going to happen what's going to happen so safety to sell safety is very very difficult i think uh, maybe we have to do a phd in mv you know this uh, you know this industry standards actually if you are working with pharmaceutical industry standards will be entirely different some general safety yes. standards those can be benchmarked but industry wise if you are in construction even in, in mining industry or chemical industry or you know some uh, uh, steel industry or whatever so according to the industry the regulations will so that is the area where sometime we lack actually that's what i noted and yes, some sir, no, 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 no. standards also you need to uh, incorporate you know within your legal register to make sure that it is updated and it should reflect into your master risk assessment also like based on yes. what conditions mm-hmm. you are assessing these risk and uh, you know calculating yes, either qualitative risk assessment or quantitative whatever the mechanism you have so yes, now let's move on to the next question what's your experience in accident investigation and incident reporting personally uh, experience is uh, like uh, uh, in pakistan i will say if they are going to blame one another like the mistakes of one person or the other person in the same way but uh, again i would say the same thing like uh, i always would going to be uh, look for the uh, system error what where the system has lacked <laughs> while investigating any incident or accident one of the worst thing that we have noticed like people don't report uh, unsafe acts or unsafe if they report unsafe acts and that intentionally did not lead to the unsafe conditions and they are going to happy that we have taken a risk that's worth taking unfortunately that is a stupid thing they are going to do so reporting the incident investigation we always praise the employees like we give we have a i almost like five times at the current position i have uh, take a talk tea with uh, employees so what your procedure says within how many hours you have to report the incident like as per your procedure the current procedure you start we have three uh, we have two two hours minimum two three hours for a single shift if it's going to be a shift right okay no what yes. i mean is uh, the reporting time like something happened got to bed so within yes. how many hours you it's are 24 hour. it's, it's 24 hours it's 24 hours it's 24 hours okay perfect yes. excellent excellent so Yes. Let's go to another question. What is your experience with uh, uh, in your experience? How do you involve and engage employee? This is one of the most critical question I'm asking you because establishing yes. and ensuring and maintaining sustaining the safety culture is one of the biggest challenge. Not only in Pakistan, even no everywhere. 
no, 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 no. As per your experience, what do you think? You know, how do you engage actually employees? I personally, I personally like. Actually, I have uh, seen that many, the, uh, many are experienced uh, safety health and safety professionals. They are going to give say employees like uh, they are behaving them as their hands. Like they are not our hands. They are the employers' employees, not our students. Yeah. And I am going to sit with them. I am going to talk with them. Ninety percent of the time, I realize that uh, why they lack because they did not have proper set of PPEs. Like in Pakistan, we have the small, medium, and large. But in some cases, if they, if it's not going to give them a proper grip or a iron steel or something, etc., then how they are going to be involved and engage with the safety culture? So I, in general, I give them five reasons. Like one, they should uh, take because it's all their health, their family, their future. And they are, uh, if they are going to a jobless, then no, no, there will be no job. Like they, so have you ever they, established any reporting system? Like who will report? Uh, like best unsafe reporter, unsafe acts reporter of them, or best risk, uh, you know, uh, risk uh, uh, informing person of the month, something like that, or uh, best yes. safest employee of the month. Or yes, in other words, the best employee of the month in health and safety regulations to be like uh, respecting health and safety rules or regulations. So in that context, any yeah, reward uh, yes, ever? Yes, sir. At uh, at Christex uh, uh, textile industry, we were uh, uh, we were celebrating the successes as well as the uh, as we noticed the failures. We were get, get going to have meetings for failures. The similarly, in the same case, we have arranged and praised them even what uh, kind of like two to three persons were being uh, upgraded from their general positions to being uh, to set out as an operator or a specific machines okay. if they have reported something uh, value or something that's going to be a, uh, like uh, cost some okay. big money to country industry so describe a time when you had to communicate complex HSC concepts or policies to an audience with varying levels of understanding because everyone is different. You know, sometimes you have educated people, experience, unexperienced, you know. And how did you ensure that everyone understood fully? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, like uh, we have the TBTs toolbox talks at uh, any of the industry, like right. We are going to show them. I like I have in my phone fifteen hundred videos. These are about the incidents, accidents, and the real time. Like I am going to show them what what would it it would cost to you. Like in 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 case scenario, it, it may be worse than you are thinking. This concept, it might be easier. Or there are some deaf ears. Like we are speaking, they are not going to hear our what we are going to say. We engage them. We use three way communication system. Like. I am going to tell them, then they are going to repeat their session. I am going to correct if they have uh, done something wrong. Okay. So this data analysis, uh, like if you, if we talked about for the last three years, this graph is going up or down or some are going up, some are going down. Actually, like if we talk about absenteeism, or have you ever linked absenteeism also with the, like either it is going down or it's going up? If it is going up, uh, in, in, in yes sir. Initially, we have noted it was going very like exponential rate at the Chinab Textile Limited. But uh, what we realized, we studied the demographic attributes and the their uh, social economy, economic status, how many people are uh, addicted to tobacco or cigarette, and uh, how many people are uh, like entertained with their special uh, holiday. And something like data that, and this was that was actually due to stop turnover rate was very high, and the production was going slow down, and we have to train uh, other employees. <laughs> Sorry, sir. to train other employees uh, to make this process again smooth, and to make it at up to the mark vision, right? Okay. So, any experience as an auditor or as a you know, safety inspections, I'm sure you'll be conducting the day to day. But what about the safety audits actually? Have you ever conducted any safety audits, like internal safety audits, or any audits of your suppliers, you know, or contractors, in other words? 
safety audits uh, were, were like we were have we were having some uh, independent uh, views of the employees like what do we what they what they really think about safety like we have uh, put some other industry our competitors guy and he's asking them what do you think uh, where they are lacking where they are going to trouble you like mm. if the, if you are going to take shortcuts right the shortcuts are easy to do but they don't understand the what's uh, the result could be so in that case uh, we audited in this way like uh, our company never in, uh, invested in uh, external audits like professional external audits uh, international uh, industries offer so inspection like we have daily inspections weekly inspections and monthly inspections as well like the maintenance of the heavy machinery cranes and uh, okay. daily uh, weekly so whenever any accident happens, we always rethink, you know, either we have to update our health and safety program or uh, or what changes, you know, the management of change. I'm sure MOC, uh, you have understanding how, how things can be further upgraded. So this same incident or accident shouldn't be repeated. Okay, one time it's repeated, but if it's repeating again and again, this is something terrible, right? So how do you like encourage even the culture of continuous improvement in terms of HSC performance? That the same incident should have happened again and again. Actually, sir, I think we are going to spot out the key issue where we are lacking that it's going to repeat again. Right? It may be the policy, it may be the procedures, it may be the person who is not competent enough. Right? Mm -hmm. We are going to a uh, take a thorough analysis of the. Uh, previous uh, incidents and the, the, the difference, the key difference where we have lagged, like where the system have lagged, where the persons may have did not understood the policies, the procedures, the safest way to do that thing. So in this case, uh, we encourage them. Uh, the employer, how we uh, employer, uh, how we empower the employer, like uh, he is going to continuously improve the, their performance, safety performance, like HSE performance. Actually, I think they are not interested in that. They always think that we guys are there to disrupt their uh, money printing <clears throat> scenarios. Yeah, this is uh, their fault or somewhere we are lacking to economics. What do you think? It depends on the condition. It's overall country-wide, you know, sometimes. Every country have a culture. Yes, sir. It's, it depends on many factors, like... Uh, uh, I recently told that I have read the three points of contact while climbing on the ladder, right? And the guy was taking out the some some sort of materials with him. I even with my employer was uh, watching all the scenarios and he was enjoying it. I said, "What do you think about this?" He said, "No, like if, if it's going to be on time, I have no issues." Okay, so through that way, you are measuring the effectiveness also because effectiveness is coming automatically in front of your eyes. So this question, yes. you know, still if you want to answer, it's up to you. What techniques do you use to evaluate the effectiveness of HSC programs and manage associated risk? I'm asking all these questions to a HSC manager actually. Don't consider this interview belong to HSC officer or you know, it is especially no, 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 no. actually, uh, you know, the detail up because you have potential, Mashallah. So you have no, potential. No. So, while evaluating the effectiveness, why we consider the reliability, the efficacy of the system we have placed. Mm -hmm. What's uh, the program we have placed is going to the same intended results. It depends upon the quarterly results or whether monthly results. And managing associated risks, like uh, risks always, people take risks when they don't know what's going to be happen, right? To manage the risks, we always uh, educate them uh, if they are going to take uh, shortcuts or uh, some sort of uh, other okay. ways. They say, so uh, now in textile industry, which was the most typical process where you always have uh, threats that something is going to happen very soon, you know. You know, in every company yes, there are some sensitive kind of processes, which we can say high hazardous processes, you know. And still human element is there. We are not using robotic technology or AI or you know, because that's all required a lot of money, right? 
So we did an automate. Was, uh, Still, we are using our human manpower. So. It was it was dying a wave and weaving unit where they were using 30, 300 types of color uh, like pigments and which were uh, contains different chemicals like ethanol, phenol, carbon monoxide, this kind of and uh, uh, the people were not sometimes they ignored to wear the long sleeves, the hard uh, oh. gloves mm -hmm. and mostly uh, in most scenarios they were they don't minimize the uh, like if they are going to uh, put the pigments from higher uh, from a different height like they can they can do it with the minimum height pakistanis uh, take it as a something we say uh, they enjoy it like they are going to do bit, but not considering their safety their uh, values why we are there to help them so in this case i consider the dying and the weaving unit was very true and second was the uh, it was dust, like cotton dust. It, it's something like H two S as a we consider H two S as a uh, non. We would not see that hazards. Like it, it was deadlier. So in this yeah. case, cotton dust are, are always the same. Like they contain pesticides. They contain different. Fibers. How do you rate this asbestos fibers also in textile? Along with this dust, this dust couldn't be ordinary dust. Of course, it has some fibers. You know, into it. So this asbestos no, fibers, I mean, once gone into lungs, the issue is for short term might be you will not face that much issues, but long term it kills your like lungs and yes, and cancer and yeah. asthma and you know a lot of breathing issues actually. And sometimes yes, we don't realize that how much uh, asbestos fibers they are inhaling every day. You know? And sometimes our housekeeping so cleaning do? system is not. Uh, uh, Wet up, like you know, it's a dry kind of uh, uh, you understand, no, actually. That's all. Uh, no doubt, sir. In, initially, we, we were we make a survey of 1300 workers at the textile okay. industry, and 100 were exposed to the uh, occupational hazards in which maybe they, there were a lot of lung cancer. The initial study, initial study had lung cancer, and some were uh, feeling stressed and body strains with the postures of the ergonomic. Uh, the different uh, chairs were not quite enough for the so even the lightning system that really matters a lot like the ice trains are not going to be well enough so, so it depends uh, on the Anam, have you ever motivated them to file a case that your company is responsible to kill your health uh, no I never Honestly, I never did because okay. it was in Pakistan. I think uh, lack of rule of law is does not. They go to police station and file a complaint. You know that because of that company, uh, literally, they didn't in, provide in, me in, like the uh, right uh, set of. Let, so let me share you a most recent incident where one of my colleagues was working. Uh, mm -hmm. The person uh, had cut his hands right, and okay. uh, he waited in in a night shift. It was a night shift. And they banded him with some sort of stress band. Like they were forced him to stay and wait for the employees to come tomorrow. And let's take the of the stress. And he waited for about seven to eight hours. So in this case, how we could expect that police is going to investigate it or going to help it? Actually, if we are not going to make some standards, how we are going to be accountable or responsible in this case? So name some human skills or soft skills, you know, we all safety profession must have first of all, because we are leading as a front leader. So we truly, you know, we are dealing to customers, GAMI regulatory bodies, even to the top management, external auditors, <laughs> our suppliers, employees, you know, at all levels. So yes, we, we, have... we, we need some soft skills, right? The first one and the most important is you have to be flexible. Sometimes you are going to wear white hat. Sometimes you are going to wear yellow hat in this case. And the second one is the leadership skill, the true leadership skill, like team engagement, the team values, and uh, uh, considering the, uh, like I, I always consider the employees are not my hands because if they are going to work safely, it's my job. It's the my job is there to save. Like I, I, I am going to earn that from that. <clears throat> if, so, if they took shortcut, 
okay. if they took shortcuts and uh, some sorts of such things, obviously I will be fired and maybe uh, go to jail in some scenarios. So I'm just preparing this presentation and hopefully uh, might be we can have another session just uh, related to soft skills because now Isha prayer is very near. So I need to be get ready for it, but uh, uh, might be next sure, session sure, we can sure. plan for important human skills. But just in a nutshell, I can tell, you know, the communication is important, persuasion is important, negotiation is important, relationship building, empathy is so much important, positive attitude, teamwork, conflict resolution, you know, the time, emotional intelligence is critically important, time management and work sure. ethics. We will add, uh, I will add this flexible also. So let's make it maybe top 20 or maybe top 25 so then we'll have another session and hopefully it will be helping the vast audience inshallah what's your future goals you know you want to be settled in pakistan or you have some dreams to be you know somewhere in another part of the world well i have you know, like to make myself better enough than i am right now like educational like i have an educational goal i am going to be do an asp in within next one year to upgrade my skill and secondly about uh, the long-term goal obviously it's going to be a good human person i to work for my Akira and okay so we will discuss privately all these things because i don't want to let people to be familiar about all your dreams and goals but anyway inshallah thank you very much and i'm really nice talking yes, to you yes, and sir, i have you. your uh, cv mashallah you have impressive credentials and proven track record of experience here so i'm sure uh, yes, you are going to land up in a better position inshallah in future okay in, in, inshallah, in inshallah. take care of yourself thank you so much sir. thank you once again thank you so much sir. Oh, my, pleasure. my pleasure thank you sir.